Hello, uh, last time we have created uh, this uh, gantry uh, robot and we defined the kinematic uh, based on a hierarchy within the design structure. So the Z axis sitting above the Y axis. But very often you don't want to change the CAD design structure or the imported structure easier to work outside of the complex design structure and to build up a very simple external kinematic structure. In this uh, third tutorial I'm going to show you how you can build up CAD design independent kinematic structures. First of all I'm creating a new scene based on our old one so I'm just copy pasting this tutorial and I'm renaming it to tutorial 3. I'm opening this. I'm not saving this one. And what I'm gonna do is I will for the moment. No, I can do it like that. I know it's totally unaired, so I'm just deleting it and adding my portal once again as prefab like we imported it before. So turning it like that, rolling it up like that, and turning it here, and let's move it here. So let's give a, again in this case a new the new colors. Tears, let's make this here aluminium. Aluminium, maybe the plastic black, this one here, and plastic blue, this one here. Okay, that's it. And we are still having in here the, the prefab with a full connection to the original prefab. And our kinematic structure is not there anymore because we imported it again. So we are having here the Z axis of the gantry and the y-axis totally in parallel. So first of all we are going to define groups within this 3D design. So uh, for example our z-axis uh, needs to be added to a group which we are going to call z-axis. For grouping with the standard fun, uh, version, you've got the possibilities to just add here group, like that. And we can name it now z-axis. And by this we are giving it a group name and you see it also here in your hierarchy view. With the professional version, you've got a more advanced uh, uh, helper to do that. We have got this selection window here. And with the selection window, you can define the groups here. So a new group, for example, Y axis. And we just select everything what we would like to put to Y axis here and push group. And just as an example, I could also put that with a plus to this group. And there's also a height and uh, isolating function for the groups. So that makes it very simple for working in bigger models and also with group. But the selection window is only available in Real Virtual Professional. Okay, but I need to put, uh, by the way, this one here, I need to make it once again out of the group. So now I'm having here two groups, Z axis and Y axis. And these groups are like references or grouping of uh, multiple components. And so even if the CAD design is not structured in a kinematic way, you could add several separated parts in your design structure to one group. Now I'm adding here outside of my um, CAD design an empty game object 
let's call it um, kinematic and within this uh, CAD object or maybe we do one thing first I don't like the position here um, I move it um, up here it doesn't matter uh, how it's positioned exactly in this case because it's not a rotation axis just for having it nearby um, this gantry and we add here two more empty game objects the one here um, set axis and one more an empty one let's call it y axis now we can add to these two components a so-called kinematic component and for example by even selecting both we can add a drive and a kinematic to it so by clicking here on this button in the overlay window we added a drive and a kinematic component to both of them because we are going to need both. For this drive, for the set axis, we need to define the direction. So it's the set direction and that should be positive. And for this drive, we are, it should go to the y direction, in that direction positive. So we added two drives by that and the kinematic component is there for defining the relation to the groups. So I can select here integrate group and I can integrate here a group name and the group has been called for example here uh, it's our I'm on my set so I want to integrate my set axis group in here directly highlighted and I would like to integrate my group my uh, y axis so and as you see here we are having two components they are referencing our parts within the design structure and we have got uh, an external kinematic structure outside of the design structure and we didn't need it to change it, we didn't need it to cut the relation to the prefab and if it, we would have imported it via the step file we would even be able to update it from the design system as much as we would like to without destroying anything. Okay, we are having here our two, um, two groups and for checking it, let's add also on both again this drive erratic position. Let's go from min pass of zero to 2000, maybe a speed of, I don't know, let's make 700 millimeters per second and by starting, I'm going to check if everything is okay, what I defined. And as you can see here, it moves and behaves like before with an external defined kinematic. Maybe let's look again a little bit more in detail into it. This component here, the y-axis is basically totally empty. There is nothing in and this highlighted, I can turn it off here, show giz group gizmo. This highlighted component is not inside here. So it's just a reference to our Y axis. Same for the Z axis, you can also turn the gizmo group. It's totally empty, it's just including an empty game object Y axis with the drive, the kinematic and the behavior model drive erratic position on it. If we now look into it in detail by starting the simulation, you will see that into the empty kinematic structure, while simulation start, the reference groups are copied. So I am now finding underneath, let's change to game, underneath my y axis, which has been empty before, the group 
y-axis which has been integrated during simulation start and same thing happens for the z-axis where all the components assigned to the z-axis are copied to. That's it for today. I've shown you another way for defining kinematics based on external kinematic groups without destroying the design structure. Next time I will show you how to build a conveyor with a drive and a sensor to make some to add some material flow into our model. Thanks a lot for today and see you next time. Bye bye.